In this video, I want to talk about how we actually use GLS estimators in order to correct for the presence of serially correlated errors. And the example I'm going to use here is the case where we have sort of yt being determined by just one sort of independent variable, so xt, and we have a sort of error which we call ut. And our sort of fitted model might look something like this, which we've got on the sort of left-hand side here. So you can sort of see here that we've got a model which is given by the yellow line, and we've got sort of runs of positive errors, which we sort of see here on these sort of first two points, followed by a few runs of negative errors, and then it sort of goes positive again. So by the very fact that we've got these sort of runs of positive and negative errors, that sort of shows that we have serial correlation. And the explicit form of serial correlation, which we're going to assume here, is actually what we call AR1 serial correlation. So we've just got ut being equal to rho times ut minus 1 plus et, where this sort of et here is defined as being sort of iid of mean 0 and a constant variance, because there's no necessary uh, reason to assume that we don't have constant variance. Okay, so this is the sort of model which we're specifying here. We've got a sort of normal linear model for the sort of yt relationship between yt and xt, and then we've got some sort of AR1 process for our errors. Don't worry if you don't understand what an AR1 process is. We're going to cover that when we sort of talk about time series in general, but I just wanted to mention it here anyway. Okay, so the problem with estimating this sort of first model which we have up here at the top is that if we use OLS on this model, we know that the errors are serially correlated. So that's a violation of one of the gauss Markov assumptions, and we know that OLS is no longer blue. So how can we actually think to correct for this? Well, the way in which we correct for this is to consider what yt minus one looks like. So yt minus one, using this sort of first model, is equal to alpha plus beta times xt minus one plus ut minus one. Okay, so all I've done is I've just taken this first model and I've restated it in terms of yt minus 1. So why have we done that? Well, the reason becomes clear if we take our original sort of left-hand side, our yt, and then we take off rho times yt minus 1. And if we take off rho times yt minus 1, we get alpha times 1 minus rho plus beta times xt minus rho times xt minus 1, plus the sort of last term which we get here is ut minus rho times ut minus 1. Well, why have we done that then? Well, if we look at this sort of error term which we have here, this sort of composite error term, then we can recognize it from this sort of AR1 model which we specified up here. In fact, if I was to take over to the left-hand side this rho times ut minus 1, I would just have exactly what we have down here at the bottom. So actually, this sort of last term here is just et, because that's what I get if I take over this row ut minus 1 to the other side. And by definition, et is iid, so it's no longer serially correlated. So in principle, using OLS on this transform system should be essentially blue. I say should be essentially blue, it's not for one sort of small reason. And that's because of the fact that we've actually had to throw away one observation because of the fact that we are now transforming the model in this way. And the sort of reason for that is that if you think about sort of the case for when t equals zero, there's no observation before that. So we can't actually do this transfer transformation for the case where y equals or t equals zero rather. So we actually have to throw away one observation in order to do this transformation. So OLS isn't quite blue. Although you can sort of think if I had loads and loads of observations, then OLS would more or less be blue. And in fact, there are actual ways of correcting for this sort of first observation. And in that sort of event, then the sort of OLS on this transform system will then be blue. Or in other words, sort of GLS estimation in general will be blue. In the next video, I'm going to talk about how we actually go about using GLS estimators in practice for the case where we have serial correlation. Because remember here, I've assumed that we know the explicit form of the serial correlation. I've assumed that we know this row here in our AR1 relationship for our errors. In the next video, we're gonna talk about how we go about estimating this row and how, hence how we go about using GLS in practice.